Once again, Kotaku has confirmed that it is shit. To say that this game is the wrong type of hard would be to say that Punch-Out is the wrong type of hard. And I'll tell you right now, this game's a hell of a lot easier than Punch-Out. This character action, twin stick shooter, boss rush, neon thrill ride will set you back 25 bucks. And it's definitely worth it if you can handle the challenge. This game will definitely keep you on your toes. The controls are pretty basic and easy to learn. You have a sword that you can charge up for a special attack. You have a gun that you can charge up for a more powerful attack. You have a dodge that you can charge up to move farther. And you have a block that gives you a little bit of health when used successfully. The challenge comes from knowing when to utilize these moves. There's no one technique that will work for every boss, or sometimes even the same boss in a different phase. This brings me to my next point. If you lose all your health in a boss fight, the phase resets. You lose a life, but then both you and the boss's health go back to full. But when you beat a phase, not only does your health go back to full, but you also regain a life back. I really love this mechanic. It really gives you the feeling of a cinematic struggle. The variety in bosses are amazing. Most of them have their own gimmicks that stand out and add to their own theme. One boss will blur your vision from its toxic nature. Another will play hide and seek with you while trying to snipe at you. One boss will force you to be uncomfortably close, while another tries to keep as much distance as possible. Some characters will attack super fast, while others attack super slow and force you to deal with the obstacles around you. The only problem I had was with the 8th boss. While still a lot of fun, there were a few times where I would stand in the wrong spot, and then the game would just glitch out and I would lose health for no reason. Fortunately, it didn't happen enough for me to stop having fun. The look of the game is gorgeous. The art design is done by Takashi Okazaki, the illustrator of Afro Samurai. All the bosses have a special and unique look to them that I love. Just to name a few, you have a deranged claustrophobic, a wise old mystic. Time is a picture in motion through eternity. A deadly sniper assassin. Now you're mine. An angelic techno guardian that sounds like she grew up in Minnesota. My people will thrive. I will be their hero. And Hexadecimal's cousin twice removed? I would also be remiss if I didn't mention the music. It's straight up bumping. Carpenter Brute, Danger, and Seattle from the Hotline Miami 1 and 2 soundtrack make an appearance along with other great artists. So good, in fact, I ended up buying the soundtrack myself. Go check out the link in the description so you can listen before you decide to make that extra purchase for yourself. The story is more or less drip-fed to you, and it's really nothing to write home about. Like, it's not bad, but it's not great. You start off chained to a torture device, and some guy in a rabbit mask lets you out. That's really all you know about the main character until the end. Instead of fighting your way through jobbers, you walk down an aesthetically pleasing path. FYI, I would highly recommend that you push the dodge button to auto-walk during these sections. It's tricky to navigate, and your thumbs could probably use a rest on the way. While traveling to your next fight, you receive light exposition dumps on the boss that you're about to fight, as well as cryptic things that don't really make sense until your second playthrough. And this game really does have replay value. With the practice mode as well as unlockable hard mode and speedrun mode for you crazy MLG freaks out there, you'll definitely want to play this more than once. All in all, you should definitely check out this game if you're in the mood for something that'll challenge your reflexes with a really pretty view.